Welcome back. The GOP running the House and the Senate, as you know. However, the president still has that veto power, which he has said he will not hesitate to use if the GOP tries to push through legislation that will not improve the country's middle class. Let's go back over to our nation's capital. Andrew Whitman live on the scene here. And he spoke with lawmakers about bills that may have difficulty getting through and if there's any opportunity for compromise. Andrew? And you know, Rich, when you talk about partisanship and gridlock in Washington, everybody's frustrated with it. But you also get to the heart of what may be really driving the stalemate here in Washington. Voters from every party say they want lawmakers to get stuff done. But you ask Democrats, they don't want to give an inch on their particular policy views. And you ask Republicans, they don't want to give an inch off their conservative or libertarian views either. To try to get to the bottom of that, I spoke to two members of the Republican caucus today with very different approaches and attitudes, both about the way things have been running here in Washington and about the president himself. Uh, North Carolina Congresswoman, Republican Virginia Fox, who may never have had anything nice to say about President Obama, frankly, up until now. And Long Island Congressman Peter King, who, as you know, is not been afraid to criticize members of his own party when he feels the time is right. Listen to the way they both describe the situation in Washington and the hopes for actual compromise and effective governance and decide for yourself where the Republican Party is headed. We've heard a lot about uh, the veto threats coming from the White House on the Keystone and on the changes to Obamacare in the hours. What proposals would Republicans in Congress be willing to work with the president on? Are there some of the president's pet policy prescriptions where the Republican caucus says, yeah, we might be able to do some business there? Well, we think it's the role of the president to come over to us. The American people spoke in the November election. The president said he wasn't on the ballot, but his policies were on the ballot. Make no mistake, he said. Well, the American people rejected the president's policies. We think the president needs to take a long, hard look at our policies and see, does he not want to come along and work with us instead of always saying it's my way or the highway? Finally, last two Congresses have been notable for the fewest amount of bills that were signed into law. I believe this was the second most last year, and then the previous Congress held the record. Any reason to think that that, that logjam might break in the current Congress? Well, you know, many people think we have way too many laws on the books now, and so you should not try to judge the success or failure of a Congress by how many bills. I'm a person that believes it's the quality of the work, not the quantity of the work. So I think we need to change our standards. We passed some really good bills last time, and we'll pass a lot of good bills now that we have the House and the Senate. It's going to be up to the president to see whether he can recognize the high quality that's coming on his desk. Congressman King, you're, you're known as a guy who's been willing to take on his own party from time to time. Everybody's talking about the lack of uh, bipartisanship in Congress these days, wondering what it's going to mean with a Republican House and Senate now and a Democrat in the White House. Is there any reason to think we're going to have a more productive Congress over the next two years than we've had in the last four? I think a lot does depend on the, on the president. I'm not trying to pass the buck to him. But I think if he shows any uh, desire to compromise at all, there will be enough people within the Republican Party who will want to try to find common ground with him, certainly on foreign policy. Uh, many of us feel that the president has not done enough as far as terrorism, has not uh, really done enough as far as ISIS is concerned. If he's willing to show that he is going to take firm steps, we will stand with him, give him the support he needs. As far as the economy, if we can find ways to get tax incentives to help small business, take some of the burdens off small businesses, uh, to uh, make it easier for uh, uh, people in middle income to go to college, things like that, where there's not necessarily an ideological answer to it. Uh, and then once you sit down, that can lead to a larger you know, series of tax reforms. So do it in a way that's not going to go against our principles or against his. But that if, if people are serious and don't, you know, just don't want to throw stones, we, we can get it done. Do you feel like this president hasn't done enough to reach out particularly to congressional Republicans? Yeah, this president doesn't even reach out to congressional Democrats. You talk to Democrats, they will tell you he's very remote. It's hard to get him to sit down. Uh, I mean, I've never had a meeting with the president, not that he has to meet with me, but I know that when Bill Clinton and uh, uh, George Bush were president, they would meet with a wide uh, range of people to try to find common ground, to try to find places they could form, maybe unlikely alliances. Now, President Obama has very little contact with Congress at all, not just Republicans, but also Democrats. How does, how does that ice get broken? How do, how do, is, does it take one side to come to the other? Is, is there any, how would you break that ice on both sides and try to get something done? 
If he could tonight reach out uh, on foreign policy, on terrorism, on something that Republicans have been talking about, or at least the majority of Republicans have been talking about, that could uh, give a chance to get common ground. And also, it would enable Republicans who feel strongly about certain issues to move forward, not be bound by the party, just as the president wouldn't be bound by his party. But he's got to, I believe, as commander-in-chief, has to take the first step. Now, to be fair, there are plenty of divisions within the Democratic Party as well. There are corporate Democrats who support Wall Street, while those others want to rein it in. There are uh, the disputes between urban and rural Democrats. But the Democratic Party not in control of either branch of Congress right now. So as we get set for the next two years, it really is the focus on Republicans. And we'll see how they negotiate with the president to see what, if anything, can get accomplished here on Capitol Hill over the next two years. We're back in just a few minutes, Rich, with the freshman perspective on the State of the Union with Long Island Congressman. And Lee Zeldin, but until then, let's send it back to you in the studio. All right, Andrew, thank you very much. And when we come back, Dominic and I taking your phone calls. We're going to go straight to those phone lines when we come back on the other side of the break. Again, our question What do you want to hear from the president tonight? Toll free lines open as we speak. <laughs>